Hey, remember that time Australia got nuked? What? What? Created by Anthony Rizzo, Sydney, Australia. Welcome to a multi-parter history video on the channel. Originally, the video was going to be about the nuclear test sites in Australia, but after a deep dive into the research and the number of operations that overlapped each other, I said, screw it, it's a multi-parter now. So, the Australian nuclear test sites. It's not something that gets talked about. In fact, it was very controversial even back then. And, um, no, no, it wasn't America's fault. It was the British. Would you kindly cut to the context now? After World War II, or rather after the success of the atomic bomb used by the USA, the British wanted one, if not several, atomic bombs for themselves. Now why would they want atomic bombs? Do I really need to answer that? Okay, the atomic bomb is a super bomb. Depending on the size, one bomb can devastate an entire city. See Hiroshima and Nagasaki for more details. Having such a weapon for any country would be beneficial, especially as a show of strength. Despite contributing to the US atomic research, the US wanted to keep a monopoly on how the bomb was made for as long as they can, which didn't last that long when the Soviet Union tested their own bomb in 1949. And you know, an enemy having such a weapon very close to you does make you nervous, especially if your country was still rebuilding at the time. Now, the UK had some idea based on what research they got from the Manhattan Project and their own research, and begun a new research and development project in 1947. After five years, they completed the research and developed their first atomic bomb in 1952. Now, like the USA and Russia, they wanted to test the bomb. They couldn't test it at home because... Um reasons. It's unclear what options the UK had, but they did consider Canada as an option, but testing a nuke that close to the USA would be, um, awkward. So they chose Australia. And guess who was the Prime Minister at the time? Yep, our old friend Robert Menzies. He keeps showing up in my videos from time to time. In September 1950, Robert Menzies, without any consultation from the scientific community, parliament, or even his own cabinet, agreed to the nuke testings. Many theories on why Menzies said yes to the testings, and to me, it's still unclear. He knew such an agreement had a lot of devastation aside from the radiation, but we forget the Cold War just started, the Red Scare was in high swing in Australia with the thought that the Russians would bomb Australia along with half of Europe and the US, and I'm not over-exaggerating this. Much like the Americans, the Australian people at the time were frightened about nuclear devastation. Other reasons came from loyalty to the British Empire, maybe Menzies might have wanted the nuclear research that focused on nuclear energy. Possibly it's a mix of all these reasons, but I'll never quite know exactly until someone in the comments types it down below. On October 3rd, 1952, Operation Hurricane commenced. The British tested a 25 kiloton atom bomb on board the HMS Spime in the Monte Bello Islands, northwest of Western Australia. From what I gathered, they wanted to simulate the effects of a smuggled atomic bomb on a ship landing at a British harbour, which is actually a legitimate concern. No one would expect an atomic kamikaze attack. The bomb was detonated a few seconds before 9.30am, and the results were as shocking as you might expect. Now, you would think that would be enough, but they did more testings on the Monte Bello Islands. Why? Well, after the first nuke, it would still be the perfect test site for more powerful bombs. Also, four weeks after the first bomb, America tested the more powerful hydrogen bomb, and Russia followed suit. I could just imagine what the British scientists were thinking at the time. So came Operation Mosaic. Two more bombs were tested on the Monte Bello Islands between May to June 1956. The first one, G1, a 15 kiloton bomb that exploded on the 16th of May, and the second, G2, was a 60 kiloton bomb that exploded on the 19th of June. Operation Mosaic led to fallout reaching the mainland, especially from the G2 bomb. It's hard to figure out the extent, politics and other factors muddled the information. It is certain that the fallout made its way to Western Australia and could have gone as far as Northern Queensland. So take this information with a grain of salt and seek more information about this and draw your own conclusions. By the 1980s and 90s, the radiation had decay on Monte Bello Islands to a point it can be visited with a few precautions in mind. In 2006, a zoologist found the wildlife had returned to the island, though there was an eradication of rats and feral cats around 2009. Are we sure we're not living out in the Fallout universe? Today, Monte Bello Islands is a park and snorkeling location. To this day, you can find the concrete signs that that a nuke was tested on the site, but this wasn't the only nuclear test site. Join me next time as we head over to Emu Fields for Operation Totem and the Atomic Tank. Draw.
Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe. It makes a smile to my face. This is the first part of a mini series of Australia's nuclear test sites, and the second part will be coming in about a few weeks. And that's all I got to say about the video. But um, see you all, mates, next time. And yeah, I got nothing else. Bye.